we, we told you about Super Tuesday results, and a man named Jason Palmer got a lot of attention for winning the caucuses in American Samoa. He's my guest tonight here on The Final Five. Up late with me, uh, joining us from Baltimore. Jason, good to see you tonight. Hey, Jim, thanks for having me on. Uh, we, we Look, I, I, admittedly, we did not know who you were until we saw Jason Palmer trending, and I think the question a lot of people have had, and, and I'm sure the question you've had a lot this week is, who is Jason Palmer? <laughs> yeah, I think even Stephen Colbert might have said that same question. Uh, Jason Palmer is an entrepreneur and impact investor who lives in Baltimore, Maryland. I've lived here for most of the last 10 years, and I grew up in upstate New York. I started out waiting tables and went to the University of Virginia. And over time, I started a business and I started another business. And before I knew it, I was kind of hooked on small businesses. And I've been doing small businesses and investing in education and technology companies my whole life. We've been talking so much in so many different ways about small businesses in America. I mean, clearly after uh, after the pandemic, as, as small businesses across the country uh, came back, and really, I mean, we, we talk so much about it being the lifeblood of the American economy. It's not hyperbole. It really is. Oh, totally. All the research shows that two-thirds of jobs are created by small businesses. And a big part of my campaign is educating people about the no-collar economy. But basically, there are all these technology, data science, healthcare jobs that are being created. And, you know, there's a lot of articles about how AI is kind of going to wipe out all of the hospitality industry and the retail industry. But all those people could get upskilled just by a little bit to healthcare and technology and data. Data, and then you'll get paid more money. It'll be better for you economically. Uh, and, and so that's, you know, small businesses make that happen. You don't have a political background. Uh, and, and when you jump into a race for, for the presidency of the United States, uh, some people would wonder, why, why focus on that? Why, why start from the top? Right. Well, it's partly because in my particular district here in Baltimore, you know, we do actually have a changeover going on where the senator is retiring, the representative is retiring, and both the people who are running for office, David Trone for Senate, Mr. Oshevsky for the representative in my district, I think they're great people, actually. They've, they've been doing good work their whole life. David is uh, an entrepreneur, uh, yeah. business person like myself. And, you know, I, I but mainly the reason why I got in the race for president is because back in October and November, nobody was in line to run against Joe. And he said he'd be a transitional figure. And he said that he would pass the torch to the next generation. And I really thought Gretchen Whitmer would get in the race or maybe Gavin Newsom or Jared Polis. There are so many good Democratic governors, senators that could get in the race, but nobody got in the race. And I asked a bunch of my CEOs, I said, should someone like me get in the race? And they were like, Absolutely. It'd be great if a business person got in the race and talked about small businesses and impact investing. And, you know, eventually I said, well, what about if it was me? Would you vote for me? And all of them said, yes, they would vote for me. And I said, you know what? I'm going to give this a try. I'm an entrepreneur. This is kind of like an entrepreneurial thing. My team has been, you know, ranging between five to nine people since we started in November. It's very much like a startup. And you you work with people uh, on this campaign who who have come from different backgrounds. I mean, you're in, you're in the Democratic race here. Uh, I, I know you you have uh, Republicans on your staff. You have people really who, who run the gamut there. How would you define your your political philosophy? I mean, are you are you more progressive? Are you more center left? I mean, are you more moderate? There are different ways to define y yourself as a candidate here. Yeah, I would define myself as radical common sense, that about 80% of us are in the middle and believe in pragmatic solutions. And in fact, you know, I've taught you could ask me almost any issue, and I will find the pragmatic solution that is uh, not necessarily in the center, but it's the it's the one that 70-80% of Americans believe in and usually combines good ideas from both sides. Now, I have been registered as a Democrat for many years. I voted for Hillary. I voted for Joe. Uh, but, you know, I voted for uh, Larry Hogan. Uh, and as he's a Republican here mm -hmm. in Maryland, I thought he did a great job. And then I voted for Wes Moore. I think there's most Americans are either independent or independent minded, and they want to vote for the best candidate. So so as this process continues here, and, and clearly, I mean, you look at the math, and, and this is this is Joe Biden uh, running away with this with, with the landslide. Do you see yourself saying in the political arena with with these sort of ideas? Because again, you're right. I mean, Larry Hogan, 
did not run as a as a far right ideologue as governor. Uh, he seems like he's trying not to position himself that way in the Senate race. So, so do you see room for yourself moving ahead past this? I do. In fact, I'll give a little tease here for the local audience that next week I am planning to announce uh, a new organization that's going to invest in down ballot candidates. So people who are running for Congress that actually embody the same thing that I embody, which is kind of a a lot of times I wear a purple tie. I decided to go a little bit more casual today. But people who are purple in their orientation, who are pragmatic, solutions oriented, come hopefully from a business background or entrepreneurial, I guess people that run nonprofits would be similar to I worked at the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. And I believe that there are great leaders in all forms, regardless of your tax status. And and then all that's going to be an important part of how I carry this forward. But I am still in the race. A lot of people have said, have you dropped out of the race? Absolutely not. I have not dropped out of the race. We have to keep getting young people energized. We have to get more people who are center left and center right to actually understand that the Democratic Party stands for small business. We do stand for a balanced budget. Um, you know, these are not necessarily things that are fully adopted by my party right now, but I'm going to push all the way through the convention to make sure that we get as much of my economic agenda onto the convention platform. Jason, what's the website? Uh, so it's palmerforpresident.us. And we're definitely accepting donations to be super transparent with you. We've only raised about $50,000 so far. So this is a campaign that's running on a shoestring. But if we get to $100,000, we get federal matching funds, and then the sky's the limit. You know, I only spent about $5,000 in American Samoa to win. If I'd had millions of dollars, who knows? Maybe I could have won in some of the bigger states. Well, the process continues. Jason Palmer, thanks for joining us tonight. Good to see you. Hey, thanks so much, Jim. And the final five is back after this.